while everyone's talking about DSA, web development and backend tech, let's shift our focus to the exciting world of mobile app development. Don't worry about the AI hype and the job cuts we have seen recently. They haven't reduced the opportunity for mobile developers. This video is for anyone eager to jump into mobile app development, regardless of their mobile platform. I have also included some courses links to get your journey started. Now before you deep dive, you might come across some intimidating mobile development roadmaps online. So my advice, take it easy and skip them for now. They often include more than you need at the beginning. These roadmaps are treasure troves for information for later stages, but initially they can be overwhelming. Once you have mastered the basics, those details guide will make you much more sense. So what should be your next step? Let's explore that in this video. Mobile apps are mainly developed using few key programming languages you will need to pick up at the start. First, Kotlin is preferred for the Android app development. It uses Jetpack Compose library to create user interface for various screens, all based on Kotlin. For Android development, you need to Android Studio, IDE and system and minimum requirement of 8GB RAM on Windows, Mac OS and Ubuntu. Next is Swift. Swift is used for iOS app creation. With Swift's UI framework, developers can redesign interfaces for multiple iOS app screens, all based on Swift. For iOS development, you need the Xcode IDE and a system with a minimum of 8GB RAM. If you are on a budget constraint, you can try cloud-based Mac OS provider at a cheaper monthly rate for learning iOS. Apps built using Kotlin and Swift are known as native apps. And thirdly, cross-platform development languages like Dart, used by Flutter Framework, allows you to write code once and deploy in both Android and OS for using Flutter development. You can use VS Code and Android Studio IDE for Flutter development. Remember this, starting with the basic is crucial, as many concepts in mobile development are universal. So once you have proficient in one language or framework in platform, picking up another becomes much easier, allowing you to expand your skills and versatility. Nowadays, I have seen learners driving straight into UI designs and REST APIs in their courses, which leaves them with unclear concept of the programming language. This approach can make your clearing interviews and managing future projects very difficult. At this stage, it is essential to focus on building your logics and understanding the basic of programming language whether it's Kotlin, Swift or Dart. Deep dive into the essence of your chosen programming language. Get familiar with the reserve keywords, if else statements, loop statements, oops concept, built-in functions and basics of DSA. Remember, you don't need to learn every bit of programming language right away. Start by sharpening your logics with various pattern, number series, string based problems and so on. In DSA, skip the complex algorithm for now. Just grab the basic like how to traverse search and sort in this data structure. Solving few levels of programming will help you understand how to apply DSA in real world applications and you will eventually understand why DSA is so crucial. Complex DSA is rarely needed except in few special cases. For the majority of mobile development basic DSA knowledge is more than enough. Now you are still at the beginner stage but making solid progress. Now it's time to start building an app. Choose a mobile framework that aligns with your programming language you have mastered. For Kotlin learners, Jetpack Compose is a gateway to crafting Android apps. Swift enthusiasts should drive into the Swift UI framework for iOS development. And Dart users, the Flutter framework is your tool for creating apps that run on both an Android and iOS. Get to know the basic building blocks of mobile apps like screen filled with buttons, text, input fields and more. The more screens you design, the more you will understand various UI components and their complexities. Learn how to manage data within your app whether it's passing data between screens or accessing information from your device like GPS location or photos. You will learn to process these informations and incoming data and display them on the UI. Understand how to save this data locally on a device, allowing users to access and reuse this information when they reopen the app. This involves file handling, setting up a local database such as SQLite for offline access. Familiarize yourself with device permissions and restrictions. Accessing internal data like GPS, photos and SMS requires user consent. It is crucial to understand these permissions needed for your apps and the potential restriction imposed by device and the app stores. App lifecycle management is a very essential topic. Grasp the essential of managing app data through different app lifecycle stages. Learn how to handle scenarios when the user is interrupted by a phone call while engaging with your app. Finally, put your skills to the test by building a simple working app. Start by something very straightforward like a calculator app 
or any other basic app that doesn't require internet access. Consider creating your own gallery app, SMS app, a to-do list app or a quiz game that stores data locally on the device. By now you have learned the ropes of coding and making apps. Going forward, interviewers will closely look at your practical skills which are super important at this stage. You should know to build the apps from scratch and be good at launching them on the app stores. It is important to have at least one app you have made available on the app store. And yes, do showcase this significant achievement on your resume and LinkedIn profile. Learning the code goes beyond just the basics. It's important to get a good grasp of object-oriented programming concepts such as inheritance, abstractions, interface, along with solid principles, which are very important to learn and practice them as they are industry requirements. Often app needs to perform some tasks in the background even when the app is not opened. This requires understanding asynchronous programming to start this task, process the result and then update the UI accordingly. For this, get the grips with the ideas of parallelism and concurrency. Practice these concepts through various scenarios in your app to strengthen your skills in parallelism and concurrency. Familiarize yourself with streams and observable data. Learn how to set up a notification or schedule a task for a later, such as setting an alarm or sending data to a server at a scheduled time. Nowadays, every app relies on the internet to fetch data from the server and display it in the mobile app. This data could be anything, text, images, videos or any other type of document. Deep dive into the server-related concepts such as JSON, HTTP requests, authentication, tokens and file upload to a server. Managing state is crucial for developing complex app and scalable mobile applications. It helps ensure that changes in your app states are predictable and easy to handle. State management is a fundamental aspect you will use in every app you build. Architecture patterns. Understanding architecture patterns isn't just beneficial for mobile developers, it has wider applications. Besides mastering logic construction, developers also need to learn how to organize their code according to the industry standard. This knowledge is essential for understanding code reusability, scalability and its importance. The more apps you develop, the better you will get grasp on the concepts like solid principles, dependency, injections, MVVM, MVI, MVC and other coding patterns. At intermediate stage, you should also focus on developing other skills such as creating and publishing a library for mobile application. This library can be used by developer communities. Accessing device hardware feature like camera, GPS and Bluetooth and receive data from these components. There are multiple use cases you will see in the app to access this hardware in multiple ways. There are multiple use cases you will see in the apps that require hardware access and to transfer this data to the server or utilize within the app. Learn how to find and fix errors and doing tests well as is really important for the developers who want to get better. It's all about figuring out whether things are going wrong in your app, making it run smoothly and ensuring it does what it's supposed to do for the people using it. Getting in the habit of checking your work by testing it in different ways and knowing the best way to solve problems when they pop up is the key to making your app strong and dependable. Incorporate third-party service into your mobile app such as payment gateways, chat and video call functionalities and login via Google and Facebook SDKs. In the advanced phase, your journey in mobile app development is defined by the extensive experience you have accumulated over the years. Here what's expected you have achieved. Prioritize fine-tuning memory management. Implement strategies to enhance app performance ensuring the smooth UI interaction and utilize effective caching techniques to increase the efficiency of your app. Learn CI CD tools. Develop proficiency in automating the building, testing and deployment phase with the tools such as GitHub Actions. Take a crucial role in mobile DevOps within your team to make the development workflow more efficient and seamless. Showing true skills comes from the whole process of designing, planning and creating many apps from the beginning then seeing them go to life to the app store. It's about facing and solving problems using what you have learned over the years and find the right solution. Being a leader means guiding your team, giving them the guidance they need and making smart decisions. The adventure doesn't end here. Once you have got enough experience in mobile app development under your belt, you are ready to explore new areas of IT field like VR, web development and backend development and many more. If you are keen on more videos about mobile app development, just let me know in the comment. Till then keep on learning and advance in your journey.